So yesterday, I said I had a surprise. And that surprise is that I have made a video with Mike Korzemba. It's gonna go up on his channel at the same time as this video, so I'm gonna put the link in the description and as the top comment. Go ahead and check that out after this video. So, I don't know if you guys remember, but on some of the other Madden games, like Madden 05, they used to have these random teams to play with. The Thunder, the Galaxy, the Fire. Look how bad these teams are. Why would they even put these teams in the game? Well, they belong to the league known as NFL Europe. A league that developed Super Bowl winning talent, along with being one of the most bizarre leagues of all time. Look guys, without the help of companies like SeatGeek, I wouldn't be able to continue making these videos. So, I gotta give a big shout out to them for this video. Look, football season's winding down and it may be hard to get tickets. And SeatGeek is an app that puts tickets from all over the web in one area, which makes buying simple. They rate these deals on a scale of one to 100, with the higher the number, the better the deal. Plus, if you use my promo code KTO at checkout, you can get $20 off your first purchase. Come on. You don't want to lose out on cheap tickets. In 1989, the NFL had decided to create their version of the NBA's D-League. It was called the World League of American Football. This league was to be funded by most of the NFL teams, each paying 50 grand to start it up. After two years of setting the league up, it was getting ready to officially go. During the middle of February 1991, the WLAF had their inaugural draft. This was full of college stars who hadn't made the NFL and guys who washed out of the league and were looking for another chance. To about 90% of these players, it was all about getting to the NFL. Here's a nice piece of trivia. College football's own Lee Corso was a general manager for the Orlando Thunder. So with the first pick in the first ever WLAF draft, the New Jersey Knights selected offensive tackle Cesar Renti, who had played a few games for the Bears a few seasons back. After the draft, hopeful owners and curious fans were gearing up to watch. The league was set to kick off at the end of March. There was 10 teams in total, six American, three European, one Canadian. They were to play 10 games, and the best four records make the playoffs. The last two teams left would play for the championship, the World Bowl. If there was anything the NFL wanted to try out, they would experiment with this league. For example, to make a game more enjoyable for soccer and rugby fans, a field goal under 50 yards was worth three points, whereas a 50 plus yard field goal was worth four points. But then the league had some weird rules. For each team's home games, they had to play at least seven local players. Every possession, they had to put in at least one native player to that country. The league would last two years, then disappear for two, then come back in 1995. This time, only six teams, all of which were in Europe. Since all these teams were on the same continent, in 1998, they renamed the league NFL Europe. Well, technically, it was the NFL EL. The National Football League European League. Yeah, NFL Europe sounds better. Because they lacked teams, there was no longer a playoff. Just the best two teams from the season played in the World Bowl. Let me tell you, there was a lot of weird things about this league. The World Bowl was pretty much more of a party than anything. And their tailgates were rather strange. It's all about the World Bowl. It's all about the Claymores. And we're taking it home tonight. It's going Scotland. back to Scotland, baby. It's going back to Scotland. We're taking it home with us. All the way back. Brave heart, baby. Brave heart. Here's what their championship trophy looked like. This seemed weird to me, but they would have bodyguards stand next to it the entire game. But what was even more bizarre was they would bring out the trophy on a freaking elephant. I don't even know what to think about that. Why? I don't understand. So here was the most important part about this league. It developed some pretty legit NFL players. John Kitna, Jay Fielder, and Kelly Holcomb, they all were starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Jake DeLome started in a Super Bowl, whereas Brad Johnson and Kurt Warner both won a Super Bowl. Kurt Warner is a Hall of Famer. One of the most intimidating guys ever, James Harrison, he played over there too. And then Dante Hall, one of the greatest punt and kick returners ever, his career would have never happened if it wasn't for NFL Europe. But getting back to the league itself, attendance numbers were always okay. 
with really good teams like the Galaxy, who were constantly in championship contention, they always had pretty good attendance, while some teams struggled to get people to come watch. The NFL rebranded the league in 2007, changing the name to NFL Europa, but it only lasted one season. Then the league was officially gone. Apparently, the NFL was losing 30 million a year to keep this going. Yeah, it's tough for American football leagues not named the NFL to survive. The World Football League was a disaster, and the XFL a total train wreck. Even the NFL's own developmental league couldn't stay afloat. But that doesn't mean an NFL team in Europe won't happen. The league may look to expand soon, and this is what the Chiefs owner had to say about this. And you could even envision a, a division right. uh, that's based over there, which would help with some of the travel dynamics. The NFL realizes that to continue to grow, that uh, we're going to have to look beyond the U.S. Aside from the glass ball trophies, weird tailgates, and losing money for the NFL, NFL Europe made a pretty positive impact on the actual NFL. In 1995, a young kicker by the name of Adam Venateri was looking for a tryout, so he traveled across the world for a chance to play professional football. This springboarded his career into the NFL, where eventually he would hit the kick heard around the world in the Super Bowl. Twice. There just cannot be any more pressure on a football player. Oh, but...